If the non-Muslim has duty, has rights, and the right, if you look, there's one concept that's gone through all of the stories that I've been telling you, is bringing people to the deen through husn and khuluq. So if that's the duty upon the non-Muslim, the duty upon the Muslim is greater. And the duty upon the Muslim who is not praying is just as great, or if not greater, than the non-Muslim. So you have to call people. How do you call people? I'll just tell you a story from Winnie Baraka. Huh? Huh? Naam. Winnie Baraka? Naam, Naam, Winnie Baraka. Shah Abdullah Omar. Allah, Umar Abdullah. Uh, bin Abu Bakr bin Salim, one of the great Mashaykh. What do they call him in East Africa? Muni Baraka, Mr. Baraka. Everybody loved him. He used to go to the Shabin, to the like the, the booze house, the club, on the way to the mosque. There was a, just opposite the mosque, there was a place where all the people used to go drinking, all the young uh, neds. And what does he do? Before going to the mosque, he says, comes into the, into the, into the place, they're all drinking alcohol. He goes, Assalamu alaikum! Come on, is Huh? Everyone okay? How are you? Wakar! Obviously, another Wakar. Wakar! How are you? How's your family? Everyone well? Huh? Good. And then he'll go to the mosque. And they used to, the, he was the mufti. He was one of the Qadis. And the chief Qadi used to come to him and say, you know, we have lots of complaints. We've been told that you go to the pub every night. <laughs> we told Qadis aren't supposed to go to the pub. You know, bringing the quality of the Qadis down. For me, Muni Baraka, his name used to make people make Toba. Well, why people would make Toba just by hearing his name. And I've seen this with my own eyes. You say, Sayyidam Rabdullah, they cry. And they come to the gathering. And then you leave them for a few months and you go back to the same. So Namr Abdullah, remember he used to play football with us. I said Umar Abdullah, he's dead. He used to be such a nice man. And then they make Toba. And one day they came to him and says, you know, we have this party. There's a rave party on the other side of the island. We couldn't borrow your um, car, could we? Because yeah, he had a pickup truck. We couldn't borrow your pickup truck. Because we can pile everybody on the back and we go down there with boogie all around. And then we come back and he says, no, 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 no. You're not insured, brother. <laughs> it's only insured for me to drive. I will take you myself. <laughs> it's safer. And it's dangerous there. He said, no, no, no. We're going to be there all night. Winnie, it's not good for you. You know, you can't. We don't want Winnie around. No, 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 no. It's not safe for you to be there on your own. You go, you have part. I'll go up to the mountains and I'll make my, and I'll come back afterwards. Don't worry. Why did he say that? He doesn't want to embarrass them. No, no, we can't make you do that, Muni. It's no, no, it's okay. I, don't worry. We'll, I'll do it. Two conditions. First one, we meet to the mosque for Asia. <laughs> we pray Asia, and then I take you to the to the the dog is tired. You do what you need to do, and then you come up to the mountains where I'll be, and then we do Fajr together. And we go home. Ah, ah, Zulisana. <laughs> Very good. So they pray the Isha in Jama'ah. They pray the Fajr in Jama'ah. And what does Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says? Whoever prays the Isha in Jama'ah is as if he made one half of the night in Ibadah. Whoever prays the Fajr in Jama'ah is as if he prayed one half the night in Jama'ah. Why did I say Sayyid Umar Abdullah is different? Nobody thinks like Sayyid Umar Abdullah. He sees people. He knows what they want. He knows exactly what they need and he gives it to them. And he doesn't tell them, do this, do that. He just has such akhlaq that when people love him so much that mentioning his name will make them cry. How do you deal with the, the, the kind of slack ones? Think of Sayyidina Abdullah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to make people feel good about themselves. And the best example of Jabal Khatib is Hatim al-Asam. Huh? Hatim al-Asam. Who's Hatim al-Asam? Min kibar tabi'in. One of the great of the next generation, greatest of the next generation. A lady came to him. To ask, he's Hatim al Asam, one of the great greats. And she came to him to ask him a question. The lady came to him, about to ask the question. 
what happens? She breaks wind. She's so embarrassed. And he sees how embarrassed she is. And he says to her, What's your question? And she asks the question. She says, I can't hear you! She said, then she stopped. And then she raises her voice. I still can't hear you! What did you say? And then the people says, What did she say? Write it down! So she writes the question down. Oh! Sorry, I didn't hear you. And then as she asks, writes the question down, she starts to feel cool. Guy's deaf. <laughs> he didn't hear me. Hatim al Asam. It's called Hatim al Asam, the deaf one. For 20 years, he pretended to be deaf. For 20 years, to make the woman feel good about herself. Hatim al Asam became Hatim al Asam. His maqam is through Husn al Jabr al Khatim. By having good. At making people feel good about themselves. As-salatu wa salam